changed again in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says, let no man deceive you with empty words. But many people out there are being deceived by the simplest of words that twist the scriptures and mold them into some kind of a form that seems to teach something that you wish the Bible would teach to soothe over your guilty conscience because you keep on sinning. Now it says in the scriptures this, in 1 John 2, he says, By this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says that I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and there ain't truth, no truth in him. Whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. And by this we know we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to walk as just as he walked. So if you say that you're in him and you do not keep his commandments, you do not obey him and follow him, take up your cross, count the cost, the conditional nature of the outcome of our salvation, then you don't know him. But who is the liar? Who is a liar? They say, well, if I say I have no sin, I'm a liar and there's no truth in me. Well, he said, you're a liar if you say you know him and you don't keep his commandments. Or you're in, walk in the light and you're still in darkness. You don't know him. Well, who is the liar? Well, let's try to make this as simplistic as possible. Who is a liar? Well, anybody that comes to you and says... Only unbelief will keep you out of the kingdom. Many preachers out there say that. The only sin that keep you out of the kingdom is unbelief. And all sin is the same anyway, but only unbelief is going to keep you out of the kingdom. Anybody that says faith alone in the finished work of Christ, or faith alone in the blood of Christ, trust in that, that he paid for your sins. Anybody that tells you that is a liar. That's not in the scriptures. That you're saved by trusting in or receiving Jesus or repeating some words or receiving him as your personal savior. They're a liar. That's not in the scriptures. Anyone that says that his righteousness is transferred to you as a cover for your sinfulness, or that virtue can be transferred from Christ to you, like imputed righteousness is the key word they like to use, because that's the words used in the scriptures. It's a liar. Virtue can't be transferred. Righteousness of Christ can't be transferred to you. Righteousness is what you do, not what you receive. Anybody that tells you man's born a sinner or with a fallen nature inherited from Adam and that Adam produces polluted offspring because of the fall and the expulsion from the garden. All that's a lie. It's all been invented. None of that is in the scriptures whatsoever. I know they can twist the scriptures to make it sound as though it is, but it's not. Those people that tell you that the human flesh itself is corrupted or inbred with some kind of a malady called sin. That's not what the scriptures teach. The scriptures use the word flesh as a means of telling you the passions and desires of the flesh. That's the nature of man. The nature of man is natural inclinations and desires given over to self-indulgence and passions sold yourself into sin. That's what happens in sin. That's how, that's how you go reprobate into sin. You're not born that way. So anybody that tells you that's a liar. Anybody that tells you that God's got to change you first. He's got to change your desires from naughty to nice, or uh, take away the lustful desire you have to look at filthy things online, or, or take away your, uh, your lust for drink and alcohol and drugs. It's a liar. It's up in repentance. It says a vivant desire change takes place in repentance, the scripture says. That's where you lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted word that's able to save your soul. That's why you cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Humble yourself in the sight of God. That's where all that happens. And everybody's got that, the inverse of truth. That it's faith alone and confess, it's a done deal, and he's going to change you from naughty to nice. He's going to give you, take away your sinful nature and give you a new nature. That's a lie. Anybody that says that is a false teacher. They're not my brother or sister in the faith. They are false teachers and need to be exposed as such, as the strongholds need to be brought down, like Second Corinthians says. Casting down all strongholds, anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Well, 
anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, the knowledge of God is that you got to come clean with Him and stop sinning, change your sinful desires in the process of repentance. So what they're saying exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It's a stronghold, a deception, back to let no man deceive you. Just like the people that say only unbelief. It's the only sin that's going to keep you out of the kingdom. I hear preachers say that all the time. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom? Do you not be deceived? Do not be deceived. Don't be led astray into error, that means. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, adulterers, or homosexuals, or sodomites, nor thieves, or covetous, or drunkards, revilers, extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. So it's not only unbelief. These sins will disqualify you from the kingdom of God. And it's the same same level. They, they, there's many these these phony Christians out there going crazy about the homosexual marriage thing. Don't want to grant them license for their for their marriage in the clerk of courts. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody, except a hypocrite, that says nobody's perfect when they're caught in their own sins? Be nice if somebody that's a real washed, born again regenerated Christian that would testify, yeah, that was my former life. Yeah, I was all messed up, but now I'm a new creature in Christ. Now I've been washed, regenerated, and renewed by the Spirit, and I'm walking in purity and faith, in victory over sin, the flesh, and the devil. But no, they don't testify. First thing out of their mouth, nobody's perfect. Again, they're liars. They bought the lie gospel, and they're liars, speaking after the likeness of their father, like John said, Jesus said in chapter 8. John chapter 8, you speak of your father the devil, who was a liar from the beginning. So you're lying and do not know the truth. Because you say, well, nobody's perfect. But yet, drunkenness and fornication and adultery is the same as homosexuality and sodomy that you hate so much in the churches. Or many of you professed Christians think that you've got to hold up the banner and be persecuted for coming against it. Well, what about the drunks and the fornicators and the idolaters and the porn watchers and the pedophiles and the abusers in your own churches? Well, you won't do anything about that. You won't do anything because you've got to be able to say, when you get caught in your sin, when you get caught in having kids out of wedlock, or you get caught in your fornication, well, nobody's perfect. Well, nobody's perfect. Well, yeah, nobody's perfect in knowledge or free from ignorance, but you can be free from these sins when you repent and come clean with God, what's the grace of God for? Grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and live soberly, righteously in this present age. Looking for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who purified us and redeemed us from every lawless deed. You've not been redeemed from your lawless deeds. You cover your lawless deeds. You excuse your lawless deeds, but some lawless deeds are worse than others. You love to say all sin's the same and only unbelief's going to keep you out of the kingdom. But then when it comes to homosexuality, when it comes to sodomy and gay marriage, well, that, that's worse than any sin. Well, in here it's not worse. It says, it says fornicators, nor idolaters, nor drunkards, nor homosexuals, or sodomites, or thieves, or covetous. It's going to inherit the kingdom. Let no one deceive you. Over here in Ephesians, he says, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. You're partakers with them in your filthy rags church, professing that you're all royal sons in rags, and everybody's got sin in them all day long. But condemning others that you think is a worse sin, when it's all listed here, it's going to keep you out of the kingdom. So let no one deceive you with empty words. They're liars. Anybody that comes to you and tells you that uh, the old man is going to die out little by little, over time. You know, the old man is dying out in a sin-confessed routine and cycle of ruin, as I call it as they confess their ongoing sins in 1 John 1, 9 and pick up where they left off, claiming Jesus is their advocate. Anybody that tells you that, whether he's a street preacher, whether he rails hard against sin, he's, you can call him a hellfire and brimstone guy, but yet he tells you that you got easy forgiveness from these type of sins that we just talked about 
You know, all you got to do is confess 1 John 1, 9, and you've got an advocate with the Father. There's a liar with no truth in him, okay? Because that's not what the Spirit of God teaches. There's a difference between the Spirit of truth and the Spirit of error. Unless you come to that understanding and discernment, you are going to be led astray into the error of the wicked. As Peter says in his final epistle in 2 Peter 3, you beware, people, you know these things. You know that you need to be blameless, pure, spotless, waiting for him as he starts from verse 14 down to 16 and 17 there. And that's the third chapter of that epistle. So don't you be led into the error of the wicked. This is the same thing just talking about. Do not be deceived. Let no one deceive you. Let, let no one err into these, into these lies that's going to make you lose your soul for eternity. So when they tell you that the old man has to die out little by little over time, and you, know, you put him to death every day and you die a little bit daily, it's a liar with no truth. The spirit of truth is not teaching that person. No matter what they say about holiness and doing what's right, because that happens in repentance. The old man was crucified with Christ. Paul says, I have crucified with my passions and desires. The life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in him who loved me and gave himself for me. But I have crucified, I've crucified them with Christ. Past tense, done, as we keep emphasizing over and over. That's the way it's taught in the scriptures. I have crucified. The old man was crucified, not is, not ongoing, was crucified with Christ. Past tense. Done. Not to be repeated.